We are actually a racing championship, and uh, unless we force the teams to collaborate, they won't, because they 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 basically want to win, and they will do anything to win, and they will actually keep their developments for themselves, <laughs> which is the essence of racing. But actually, we can find a balance when we force them to do something. Like you know, a good example would be Michelin with the tires. We impose a single tire for the championship if we think that. All together, we can, you know, evolve better and with more sense. A, a better tire that is more sustainable, that is has less rolling resistance, that is more appropriate for the championship than entering into a tire competition with two, three, or four tire brands that would not focus probably on sustainability, would focus more on performance. We do the same at the moment with the batteries, and we're going to continue doing the same with the batteries. But if you let the teams on their own, I guarantee you, they will not operate. Right, right. So we actually need to create those spaces and some of those conditions to encourage uh, encourage uh, collaboration and people to innovate around the right things. Yes, I wouldn't even call it encourage. I would really call it force <laughs> in case of teams. But you know, I'm I'm a team owner. I mean, a former team owner. You know, one of the frustrations of being a promoter of the championship is that I cannot have my own team, which is what I really like. When I was having my own team in GP2, I was having a lot more fun. But I, I was also only thinking of one thing, right. which is to win. Right. Okay. Uh, and I just want a question to you, uh, Phil, and also Manuela. A uh, huge global company like uh, DHL with a long history, sometimes um, there's an accusation thrown that, well, you know, we have the, the, the kind of corporate social responsibility, boutique, interesting, fun area, which is sort of innovation and sustainability, but fundamentally, the business doesn't get it that actually we are offering some of these solutions, but they're parked in a in a nice thing marked sustainability and innovation. But the main business gets on with its main business. I just wonder, Phil, uh, you had an involvement uh, in the company for quite a while. While your sense of how uh, innovation, in particular sustainability, is now becoming a part of the DNA of DHL. Yeah, I, th I think um, the, the trap that companies can fall into, and I think you've alluded to it, Peter, is that CSR, corporate sustainability, becomes um, a bit of an also-ran in, in an organisation. It doesn't necessarily attract um, the best people, and, and this, I, I speak of, of um, uh, but generally, and I think many companies fall into this, this trap, and it's something that they think that they should do, um, but it doesn't really have the energy and the, and the, and the drive behind it. So if I sense that what is happening in technology and the opportunities that we have today in this, in, for example, this field can change, your, can change all that, and that technology will, in fact, change that position. So I mean, any, any, any company, and in some ways in, in the past we've been guilty of it as well, we've had a very, very wide range of, um, of, of CSR activities that we think that we, it's a good thing to get involved in, but we haven't done it in a, um, in, in, a, in a particularly strategic or focused or directed way. Companies will do it because they think that they, sh they think they should do it. So they might do it in an altruistic way, um, but without looking at the at the ultimate benefit of it. And that's what I find so exciting about the the, the subjects that we're speaking of today, because you can really make a, make a connection to the future of our of our industry, the future of logistics, the the. Um, the, uh, the future of environmental pr protection, and as, it, as Alejandro says, this this is a race, and um, and I know it from some of the work that I do with the, the with, with 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 wildlife. This is this is a race to save the African wildlife species because it's it's going going gone unless and, unless we move on very quickly. And equally, um, other aspects like the saving the planet through um, mitigating pollution and the sort of things that we're doing with electric and technology are um, so, so important and, and clearly awareness has got so much to, to do with that and, and, and again I think too many of us 
uh, sort of armchair researchers, armchair observers, spectators about this whole thing. So um, it's not until one gets close to these things, you either get, you get close to the wild animals, get close to what's going on here over, over the next week, over the next weekend, and to network and to talk. And I remember last time we came, we came down here and our colleague from Michelin put a, for me, put an entirely new perspective on tyres. Because in our, in, our, in our biz, we think it, it, it doesn't have a particularly high profile. And then Michelin will talk about, well, they're not just make, they just don't just make tyres. They have a whole strategic and a, a vision and an aspiration of what they can do to, change, to, to actually change the industry. So they're not just selling tyres.